Hello, and welcome to this edition of the Pulse on Power Show. I'm Ed Merkel, and we are pleased to present to you this series of videos designed to demonstrate the key features that you should be considering when selecting a power supply. Redundancy is the doubling up of critical components for increasing the reliability of a power supply system and ensuring if one power supply fails that the remaining equipment will carry the load. However, care should be taken that if the failed unit does not become a burden on the remaining equipment and this is accomplished with decoupling diodes. If one power supply fails, the other units take over and the diodes ensure that the failed unit does not short circuit the system. There are several types of redundant systems on the market today, but we will be addressing N plus 1, where N represents the number of power supplies that it takes to run the load, and then you add an extra one as a spare in case one fails. Let's take a look at a working small N plus 1 redundancy example, which can represent a much larger system. Before we begin, let me explain how the panel is laid out. First of all, here's our load, a 4.2 amp 24 volt DC motor. The motor belt drives the second motor which becomes a generator to power these light bulbs. The generator and the bulbs are used to keep the first motor fully loaded. If we were to use our 50 watt or 2.1 amp power supplies to operate the 4.2 amp motor then it would take two to run the load which represents N and then an extra one is added as a spare. These two modules over here are dual input decoupling diodes or redundancy modules. The panel is wired per the following schematic. The output of power supply number one goes to the first input of the redundancy module. The output of power supply number two goes to the second input of the redundancy module. The output of power supply number three goes to the first input of the second redundancy module and since we do not have a fourth power supply the second input of the redundancy module is left unused. The output of the modules are tied together to make one common bus and then pass through the ammeter on the way to the motor. There is also an indication light wired to each of the DC OK signal terminals. One other point that should be mentioned is that each power supply should be connected to a different AC source because if all the units were connected to one source and that source failed, all the power supplies would stop working, defeating the purpose of a redundant system. When I plug the system in, you can see that all three power supplies are functioning, which can be verified by the LEDs on the front of the units or by the DC OK signal, which in this case is a light. The external signal is used to inform a PLC or personnel that there is a problem with one of the power supplies. Because what good is it to have a redundant system if you don't know if one of the power supplies is not working? If we look at the ammeter, you can see that the motor is drawing about 4 amps. If I was to simulate an AC failure to one of the supplies, you will see that I have taken power supply number two out of the circuit, which can be verified by the LED on the front or the remote signal, but the motor continues to operate as normal. It is a common misunderstanding that the spare power supply is sitting dormant and only turns on when needed, but actually all three units are working and sharing the load. So when one unit fails, the remaining two just carry more current but still operate within the rated capacity. Once the AC problem is resolved, the power supply is put back into the circuit and once again the load is shared between the three supplies. If one of the units failed in a shorted condition, normally the DC bus voltage would go to zero. However, with the protection of the diodes, the motor is allowed to run. If I take this wire and place it across the output of power supply number three to simulate a short, the power supply stops functioning, but because of the redundancy module placed downstream, the motor does not turn off. Once the short is removed, the power supply self-recovers and continues to carry current. I can remove the decoupling diode from power supply number three circuit by placing a shorting wire across the input and output terminals of the redundancy module. If power supply number three is shorted again, the load will stop working because the diode is no longer there to protect the DC bus voltage from going to zero. You can see that the motor turned off because a short in one power supply that is connected in parallel affects all the remaining supplies. As before, once the short is removed, the power supply self-recovers. 
Redundancy is used primarily when downtime is unacceptable or when the cost of the extra power supply far outweighs the cost of the downtime. The benefits of using standard off-the-shelf components to build your redundant system are easy to see and as your system grows you have the flexibility to add more supplies without the need of rewiring your whole control system. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any additional questions, please call us or refer to our website where we have additional information on our products and applications. Office of Polls want to thank you for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you on our next edition of Pulse on Power.